Most manufacturers list a torque figure for their engines in the specifications, but it doesn't tor the concept of torque doesn't only apply to engines, it's involved in removing bolts or pedaling your bicycle. Anywhere where there's a rotating axle or shaft, uh, there is torque involved in the uh, in the rotating parts. So I'm going to explain a little bit in this video uh, when uh, manufacturers list a torque figure of five or ninety-seven. Well, what's the meaning of that number? And it's usually followed with a unit of measurement like newton meters or foot pounds or some such thing. So we're going to discuss torque here a little bit from practical experience you know that it's not possible with a small stubby wrench like this to remove a lug nut. This is a lug nut that's holding your wheel on your wheel hub and the hub is on the axle so this lug nut is not really coming off with this stubby wrench because you cannot generate enough torque. By definition torque is a measure of how much of force that you can exert causes an object to rotate. You want this object to rotate, you're exerting some force and you're generating f torque. Okay, Torque is not force. Torque is a product of force and leverage. Okay, Little wrench, little leverage, big wrench, big leverage. Little wrench, little wrench, little torque, big wrench, big torque. What do I mean by torque is a product? Torque is not force. All right, looky here, I have these cute icons I drew. That's a candle for heat. When you have heat and you add or apply it to dough, that's dough in a bowl, you're gonna have bread. And you're gonna have different kind of breads. You can have pita bread or this square bread. You can have croissant, you can have bagel. Nobody calls dough bread because it's just not bread it needs heat with it so likewise force is not enough uh, force is not torque force is uh, you can be applying this force this way or you can be hammering it's, you know it's force is not enough it has to be applied specifically to produce rotation on uh, on the object to rotate so likewise Yes, candle flame is not going to be enough uh, to apply to dough. It needs to be in an oven. It needs a massive amount of heat. And but those are that's that's how ingredients and product work together. Okay, so your your ingredient here is leverage and force, and your product is torque. And just as with bread, you can use this product to make other products with. Uh, out of bread you can you can slice it and you can make toast with additional heat you can make light toast and dark toast yes you can make charcoal as well or you can make a grilled sandwich with additional uh, meat vegetables whatever you want to put into your grilled sandwich so likewise torque is not necessarily the final product when it produces rotation that rotation has an rpm you know it's, it's going to be spinning, so, so torque is not the end of everything. How torque is calculated and how manufacturers arrive to those torque figures is... Uh, I'm going to show you with this example that we have. That if you grab it here, like so, the center of your force that you're exerting will be somewhere there. And you're going to be exerting, say, a force of 50. Just just 50. It's not 50 newtons, it's not 50 kilogram force, it's not 50 pounds force, it's not 50 dyne, it's just 50. Eh, just work with that number. And here is the fulcrum point or pivot point for the rotation. And we're gonna have here a distance or leverage, I'm gonna mark it with a D, a distance of uh, how about 2 two units. It's not two centimeters or not two inches, it's not two feet, it's just two. Okay. The torque that you're generating with your ingredients here is calculated by a multiplication two times fifty and you're gonna get a torque of one hundred out of it. One hundred units. You have fifty units of force, two units of leverage or distance and you have a hundred units of torque. Of course, the 
lug nut is not even budging if that's the amount of that's the amount of uh, torque you're generating you need a biggie wrench and oops and with a biggie wrench the game is going to look a little differently you're going to grab it here at the end or the middle of your grip is going to be somewhere here you're exerting a force of 50 because no you didn't get stronger from minute one to minute two so you're exerting the same force of 50 units and your your leverage here will be instead of two in this case uh, how about eight okay just eight units so there's your distance of eight units and the amount of torque you're generating this way eight times fifty and that's gonna equal to 400 units of torque so right away you quadrupled you quadrupled the amount of torque that you're generating and uh, again torque is not force the force remained the same 50 here 50 here you didn't get stronger you just went to grab a bigger wrench you increased your leverage so torque is calculated by the this unit here the force being multiplied by distance and you're gonna get torque and it's a Greek uppercase T it's a it's a modern Greek it's pronounced tough you can pronounce it any which way you like it's the same as the Latin alphabet uppercase T or capital T no it's not English alphabet it's Latin alphabet so but they mark it with the Greek uppercase tough because uh, that T has been used for either time or temperature and, and so just we need a new one and they jumped on the Greek, Greek uppercase T tough so distance and force uh, multiplied produces the product of torque that would be the idea when it comes to engines how do I do this two page when it comes to engines this is how they arrive to their figure of say a torque is 5 or the torque is 97 you have here a that's the center of rotation of your, on your crankshaft you have your counterweight on a crankshaft and you have your connecting rods lining up something like that and there's your piston okay the force that's being exerted here in the combustion chamber is by the burning gasoline or diesel whichever the case and that produces your force that is your force component and where your leverage is that's here between that joint here and the center of rotation there so this distance here the crank offset I'm just gonna write it, write it here crank offset that's your leverage you can increase the um, combustion chamber size to generate more force or you can increase the crank offset to, gen to generate more torque okay with the uh, same on a bicycle you know if your crank is shorter it's gonna be uh, generating very little torque and it's not gonna maintain its speed through uphill and downhill and uh, and uh, through uh, various terrains muck and mire and whatever so if you have just a little offset distance for your for your piston even if it's the same big piston as the other one it's going to generate the same amount of force down but the crank offset here is a little bit is a lot less it's just a little bit of distance there for crank offset so this one is generating generating a lot less torque okay i'm gonna go with tav I'm gonna go with Greek letters. So this one is generating a lot less torque than that one. So in an engine, that's how that's how the components inside the engine uh, work together to generate torque, and uh, that's what's uh, involved. That's all my story. That's what I wanted to share, just so you have an idea when it comes to torque and uh, you're changing your uh, gearing or your sprockets or uh, or uh, crank on a bicycle, uh, you know that's that's what torque is torque is gonna make your 
vehicle maintain the steady speed uh, whether it's going uphill or whether it's going through uh, soft terrain or muddy terrain it's uh, the the wheel is going to be rotating at a nice and steady rpm